One of my absolute favorite cameras that I've used for a little bit over two and a half years now is the Sony a7S III. It is hands down one of my favorite cameras that has been released for the last four years and I still love it to this day. There's nothing else that I would like to have in it except for a built-in ND filter. So I think that until Sony drops something that has that built in, I'm probably gonna stick with the a7S III for quite some time. But when it comes to photos though, the A1, mm -hmm, there's gonna be a video on that. We're not here to talk about Sony cameras though, because we're here to talk about one of the strangest cameras that has been released in the last couple of years, in my opinion. The DJI Ronin 4D. This beast is freaking amazing but it's also very strange i remember the first time that i tried it out i was kind of like fascinated by the looks of it because it it looks kind of intimidating it's one of those things where you're like okay how does this work it's uh strange but it's also very innovative when you start using it. And when you start thinking about how much you actually can do with this camera, that is also where it kind of shines through compared to a camera such as the a7S III. The first thing that I want to cover is the camera or the actual sensor of this thing, because it is a 24 megapixel sensor, which means that you don't have the same amount of light gathering capabilities as you would have in, in something like the a7s3 that only has 12 megapixels because the pixels in the sensor is bigger because it's both full frame sensors however though you're able to shoot in 6k with this camera and that is something that you're not capable of doing when it comes to the a7s3 or even the fx3 or the fx6 another thing that the sensor has is built-in nds and you can go from nd2 all the way up to nd 512. So why do I think that this camera is underrated then? Well, mainly because it offers everything that you need. The autofocus in this camera is not even comparable, I would say, to the A7S III because Sony has such a genuine worked through autofocus system in their cameras. And this is using a new technique that is LiDAR autofocus. But I would still say that this works really well on tracking your subjects and making sure that your subject is in focus. It can miss because it doesn't have the IAF when you're shooting kind of like personal shots. But other than that, I think it's fantastic. And when we're talking about the camera, hello, changing the lens mount. That is something that you can't do on any other camera that I know of, unless you actually go up to different cine cameras. But being able to have Sony lenses, DJI lenses, Panasonic lenses, bam, smacked on there huge. On the side here, you can see that we have mic input and we also have headphone jack. You have a true HDMI port as well. And then on this side, you have the SSD drive so that once you're done shooting, you just detach that and start editing directly from this if you want to do that. What? Hi there. Hey, how you doing? I think I might have switched off the autofocus, but we're on. Okay, good. I uh, just want to say a thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is none other than myself and my Final Cut Pro course. I've been working on this Final Cut Pro course for so long, and it's finally live. If you're interested in Final Cut Pro and want to learn how I edit my videos, I'll take you along on the entire process. Not only are you gonna be able to have over 60 episodes of Final Cut Pro knowledge, but there's also lifetime access. So you're gonna be able to access all the future updates together with some libraries from my actual projects that I'm working on in Final Cut Pro. Link is in the description. Being able to have a built-in gimbal to your camera is something that I think a lot of people don't really consider when they are buying a new camera, but it also comes with a price, and that is the portability. Looking at something like the A7S III, you can definitely see that I can, I can put this in my camera bag and just be done with it, then bring it out and then attach it to a gimbal. But with the Ronin 40, it's like, okay, oh, I'm just gonna put it on my shoulder here and bring it. It's one, it's a big camera, but Considering what you have to get for the a7s3, for example, in order to have the same things as you have in this, you gotta have to get a gimbal, maybe a display, a wireless transmission for the gimbal, and then you probably wanna have some ND filters, because that is something that you don't have on the a7s3, built in, 
to the Ronin 40. Having a lot of those things built into a camera is actually somewhat good when you want to make videos. But I wouldn't say that this shines for making YouTube videos because it's way overkill if you just make YouTube videos or if you're just making vlogs because no one in the right mind would be like welcome to my new video today we're gonna talk about some fun stuff and that is kind of where you get an a7s3 instead of one of these but having the possibility to turn on or off the gimbal and make it a true handheld camera if you want to do that a lot of people that I've talked to think that you have to use the gimbal all the time but that is not the case because you can choose whether you want to turn it on or off another thing that you get with this is then of course the 4D, which I think is uh, awesome. <laughs> Having the Z axis stabilized when you're shooting videos is very good and it does a fantastic freaking job of keeping the shot extremely smooth. It kind of gets rid of all the bobbing motion that you would otherwise have with a gimbal. And considering the size of this thing, you don't need anything extra, right? You can just bring this, you can start shooting, it's gonna look smooth as hell with just this setup. You can just grab it on the go, or you can put it in underslung mode and just grabbing the top handle. So after using this camera now for quite some time, I gotta say that the Ronin 40 is definitely one of the most underrated cameras that I've seen because it has so much to give when it comes to built-in capabilities in one single unit. You don't have to go out and buy a gimbal. You don't have to go out and buy a display. You don't have to go out and buy different NDs for your videos. You don't have to go out and buy anything else. You have everything built in. And I am actually very eager to start using this more in 2023 because I want to see the true capabilities of this camera. I want to see what can I create? Because I remember when I was shooting a music video together with Dead by April, it performed flawlessly. There were so many shots that looked so good that I was kind of blown away of how great the image quality was. And the only reason that I haven't actually used this camera is because it's a hassle to take out of the box compared to my a7s3. But it's also because I'm mostly doing these kind of videos compared to what this camera is capable of. Would I use this camera for YouTube videos and that kind of stuff? Absolutely not, heck no, that goes away. But would I use it when I shoot documentaries? Or would I use it when I make short films? Or would I use it when I want to make something look a little bit over the top? Heck yeah, that is where this camera shines. I would love to know what you think about the Ronin 4D because it is fantastic in my opinion to have something that is capable of having all of this built in without having to buy something extra. For all the course members of my Final Cut Pro course, you're gonna be able to download some footage that is shot with this camera. It's gonna be under the assets folder. So head over there and check that out. And if you haven't signed up for the course, link in the description. Peter from Sweden saying goodbye, have a good one and take care.